Hey, it's Jeff, and we're back for day seven on the Viking expedition ship Octantis on the Antarctic Explorer Cruise. Before we dive in real quick, if you're enjoying this series, please click on the subscribe button so you can automatically get notified as soon as the next video in the series gets released. Thanks to everyone who subscribes. I really appreciate it. Okay, enough of that. It's day seven, and we wake up moored just off Cooverville Island, which is the home of a large Gen 2 penguin colony, or rookery as they call it, and also formerly used back in the early 1900s for whale flensing or processing. So you can occasionally see some whale bones here on the shore. So this is maybe a five or 10 minute rib boat ride from the ship to the shore. And actually, since we skipped going ashore on day five at Des Moines Point, this was the first time that we had actually walked on Antarctica, so pretty cool for us. So this was a beach landing, meaning you depart the rib boat into shallow water, and that can sound a little bit intimidating, but you can see in the video here that it's uh, pretty calm waters, which certainly helped, and the water didn't go over the top of our rubber boots, so it really wasn't a problem. We didn't get wet, our feet didn't get wet. Uh, you can also see that the shore here is very rocky and it can be a little bit slippery so you need to be careful and watch your step when you're walking up on shore. Once you get on land you can basically go one of two different directions. To the right and up the hill is a bit more difficult but they do have walking sticks available to help you so you just have to ask for those. And this path definitely offers the best views of the penguin nesting areas and the island in general just because you get to a higher altitude. It's definitely worth the hike if you're up for it. You can see the pass they call penguin highways from up here, so it's kind of neat. The penguins basically do their nesting in the large rocky outcroppings that you see that don't have any snow on them, the dark areas. At the top of the hike, off to the right, we had one large nesting area in front of us, below us, and another one up above us. And many of the penguins here were sitting on nests, and you would regularly see them walking up and down from the nesting area, going from and to the water to get food. Now, the second option from the beach is to walk to your left, and this is a much more level walk over to a different penguin nesting area. So if you don't feel like going up the hill, this, this way is perfectly fine. You're going to see plenty, plenty of penguins. On the way over, we ran into a small group of penguins wandering along. And that was quite funny. And when we got to the nesting area itself, we actually saw a young penguin standing there with its mom or its dad. I'm not sure which. And that was neat. That was the only time we saw that. And so back at the landing beach, when we got back from that, we sat around for a couple minutes and watched the boats load and unload because it was pretty interesting. There was a lot of, you can see a lot of penguins here who were very curious about what we were up to, and they were playing around in the water near where the rib boats were landing. So they're kind of zooming around in the shallow water. You can kind of see them zipping around. And occasionally one would get really curious and come up on the shore and wander up close to us just to see what we were up to. After that, we loaded back onto the rib boat. For loading back onto the rib boat, what you basically do is walk back out to the, to the rib boat with the help of the crew, and you sit down on the edge of the rib, facing out, and then you swing your legs over and then scoot down so that the next person in line can get in. Getting back out is the opposite. You swing your legs over from a regular seated position, and then you stand up into the water. So that's kind of how that works. Then we took a quick trip back to the Octantis, and after that we changed. We decided to head over to Mamson's for some food. It's kind of a casual afternoon place where you can get waffles, open-faced sandwiches, soup, stuff like that. We had to be pretty quick because we had also scheduled to do a special operations boat trip today. Now I covered some of the special, special ops boat stuff in the day four video, so I'm not gonna repeat all that. But this, these, these trips are a lot of fun. A tip here, I'm just going to say, is to remember to really dress warmly and in a lot of layers for these special ops boats because they tend to go further out, they tend to go quite a bit faster, 
and then with the wind factor it can really get chilly pretty quick in these boats so wear your neck gaiters wear you know if you have face masks or balaclavas you know wear it all and you can always take it off if you don't need it so for this trip we met in the aula and we went down to the hangar deck as a group to the special ops boat loading area a bit more detail on the boats these are really neat boats they have kind of raised individual seating for maybe 10 or 12 people total two people per row so everybody has a really nice outside view the ship the boat itself has a see-through roof and open sides so you get a nice nice visibility from no matter where you sit and the seats actually are pretty high tech they have built-in shock absorbers so if you really get moving and you're going through some waves it takes some of the edge off the bouncing up and down that you may have experienced on a traditional boat on a lake which is really nice it's it's much it's a much calmer and easier ride on you and the seats also have two arms with hand grips that swing down into place once you're seated so it gives you something to grab a hold of while you're while you're on the cruise so after launching out of the back of the boat which is just super fun every time we do it so uh, we really enjoy that part we headed off on our adventure today they took us all around the area around the boat we saw some amazing scenery saw some really cool iceberg formations saw some penguins swimming and porpoising around us and there were a few other special ops boats out there at the same time so at one point we ran across another one and they told us where we could go see a leopard seal hanging out on some floating ice now leopard seals are one of the largest seal varieties and they don't really have many predators other than, than orcas so they feed on smaller seals and on penguins so you don't really usually see them with many other animals around when you find one and they tend to be loners so you tend to find them one at a time this guy as you can tell was not bothered by our presence at all he barely gave us the time of day after we left him we went over near to the glacier face and the guide talked to us quite a bit about it very informative and interesting stuff they do a great job on these Viking trips of using every every opportunity to educate you on what you're being exposed to and I really like that after that we headed back to the ship and you guessed it we went to the spa and we hung out in the hydrotherapy pool and the saunas uh, we just love that place after that we went to the daily briefing in the aula again where they go over what you're going to do tomorrow as well as discussing some of the science that they're doing on board they do do a good bit of science on the ship including these remote underwater baited cameras that they're using to try to catch pictures of various things on the floor of the ocean they also do regular penguin counts at each of the penguin rookeries we visit so we get regular updates on all that at these daily briefings so that closes out yet another fantastic day in our Antarctica just as a side note the order in which we stop in places likely won't match the order in which you're gonna stop on your trip because unlike other Viking sea and river cruises the order of stops isn't locked in instead it's determined more dynamically by agreements between various Antarctic cruise operators in order to avoid multiple cruise ships being in the same location on the same day and this really works out great for you as a guest you basically feel like you have Antarctica all to yourself we literally never woke up with another cruise ship parked nearby us or even in sight of us honestly in fact I only remember even seeing three other ships during our entire time in Antarctica and they were at a distance from us so it's pretty amazing next we're headed to Base Brown at Paradise Bay and we'll cover that in the next video thanks to everyone who's watching this series talk to you soon